Do you really have to learn the notes on the guitar? Nah. Should you learn the notes on the guitar? So right now you're going to learn a quick, easy, dirty, calorie-free, streetwise way of being able to break the guitar up into little sections where you can start learning what note your finger is under. Okay, so we already know the name of the open strings, but if you don't, from high to low, it's E, B, G, D, A, E, right? And if you can't remember that, you could think of this as acronym. Every big girl dances after eating, or every big guy dances after eating. So how did I first start learning where the notes were on the guitar? My guitar teacher asked me, hey, do you know where the notes are on the staff? And I said, yeah, I do. And then he handed me this. Then he told me to learn it by next week. It was a disaster. So using an octave to determine what the note is that you didn't know in the first place is not new technology. But as I was putting this video together, I thought, why not give it a name? So I called it Octave Capture. Wow, so cool. So I'm guessing that you already know the notes on the E string, the low E string, which is the same on the high E string, and also the fifth string. But if you don't, I will include a chart for you which will help sort those things out for you. Okay, so here's how octave capturing works. It's very simple. For instance, if I know that this note here on the 8th fret 6th string is C, then I know that if I play this note right here, let me move my fingers out of the way so you can see, which is the 10th fret 4th string, is going to be C also. I can play this shape. And I, so now anywhere on the guitar, I've got a bunch of C's. Now here's the cool thing, watch this. If I put my fourth finger where my first finger was, I can do the same thing here. C, and then I'm going to reach to the third string, fifth fret, and I've got another C, and I've got a C here too. So now I'm familiar with both that those are C's and here. So that means anywhere on the guitar I can find this configuration. If I move to uh, A flat for instance. And I also have... Okay, so from the fifth string it's nearly the same octave configuration. So to capture the D octave the same thing as what you did on the sixth string. Now if I had a seven string guitar with the high string being the extra string I could play the octave here but since I don't I can play it like this. Now if I wanted to get real stretchy about it and it's that simple. So when I've done that I'm totally set up to do the octave capture from the 6th string, which we did previously. So, The next thing we're going to tackle is something really simple called enharmonics. Not really that simple of a name, but it is a very simple concept. It's really just two different ways of saying the same note. For instance, if I use octave capture to get the B, note right here. If I go down a half step from B, I have B flat. Because remember, a whole step is two frets and a half step is one fret. So that's B flat. B flat can also be called A sharp. Here's A, half step up is A sharp. So B flat is A sharp. It's the, it's the same thing. It's another way of saying the same note. The next thing that you have to know is that there is a half step in between E and F and B and C. So every B and C, there's just, it's just a half step distance. So you might be asking yourself, is B sharp C? Absolutely it is. And is C flat B? It absolutely is. Just like is E sharp F and is F flat E. 
Yes, it is. So that's going to take a little bit of time to get used to. It's not a big deal and it's not a do or die situation. Okay, so let's go to G here. I'm just randomly choosing notes. So a half step below G is G flat. It could also be called F sharp. Okay, so that's pretty much how enharmonics work. It's not that complicated. Again, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to and that's it. Okay, so here's the chart that came with my bottle of ibuprofen. Um, sure, it's going to give you a headache if you stare at it for too long and it can be really confusing if you try to just memorize the whole thing in one sitting. It's really not for that. It's more like a map that you would refer to when you get lost or if you're trying to find out simply what a note is, um, if you're working on my soon to happen triad pairs video, this would be a great chart for you to unstick yourself when you got stuck. So if you'd like to get a copy of it, please feel free to um, send me an email and I will definitely shoot one over to you as fast as I can. That's an E minor 7 11 card. So next time you drop your guitar in one of your drunken stupors or your boyfriend or your girlfriend decides to throw your guitar on the floor because you're not spending enough time with them or you bang your guitar into the wall or you just happen to strum the guitar open like that, just scream out E minor 7 11 and you know, in enjoy the response. We now return to your regular programming. It really doesn't take that much hard work to become an expert to know where the notes are in the guitar neck. I'm sure you know where everything is in your room. Well, maybe you don't know where everything is and maybe that's kind of like how you are on the guitar right now. But the more you think about it, the more you study it, the more the notes will avail themselves to you. Now also, you can become a very good reader of regular music, not just tablature music on the guitar. How do I know this? I know this because I worked under a guy named Randall Dallahan over at the University of Miami's Studio Music and Jazz Guitar Program. Randall took over for Pat Metheny when Pat Metheny was teaching there in the 70s and quite some time after that I joined him after I finished my master's degree over there. I joined him as a guitar professor and I learned his methodology and I also taught it. He really has codified a brilliant way to teach anybody from zero to hero on how to read and I always give props to him for that this is not my method but it is a brilliant method and I'd be more than happy to teach that to you so give me a shout out I would love to work with you and remember you and I we can conquer the world oof, oof, oof.